welcome back. Uh, we have a guest today who has not been on with us before. The Braille Institute has, but Marcy Ebarb, this is your first time. You are a counselor with the Braille Institute. That's welcome. Right. Thank you. Nice Thank to have you. you. Uh, first off, uh, with being that you're a counselor with the Braille Institute, are you someone that when um, a person first contacts the Braille Institute, you're the one that is going to sit with them and kind of figure out what their needs are? A lot of times I will do that. We have mm -hmm. a student advisor who does the initial intakes, but oh, okay. especially if somebody's having a really difficult time emotionally, they're struggling, they need maybe some resource information or things, then I will, I will meet with them as well. All right. Let's uh, talk about some, something that people sometimes are confused on. We hear someone can be legally blind, mm -hmm. and yet they can still see. Right. And I, I, my take on that is usually uh, bec we have um, quite often uh, doctors on who uh, deal with sights and, mm -hmm. and it's usually their vision is so poor they need the Coke bottle of glasses that if they took off their glasses it would really be useless to them. They couldn't right. really function. Right. Is that what uh, that means, that term? Well, legal blindness actually refers to um, definitions related to central visual acuity or peripheral vision okay. and it's your best corrected vision mm -hmm. so you know even even wearing glasses um, is required in terms of that definition but legal blindness is doesn't mean total <coughs> blindness mm -hmm. and and actually that's only about 10 percent of people who are legally blind have total vision loss so okay um, most people who are legally blind still have some remaining vision and they um, but they do have some difficulties. They may have difficulties with reading or writing or mm -hmm. um, recognizing faces or traveling uh, independently, that sort of thing. Yeah, so. uh, definitely. Uh, if someone is uh, noticing sight loss, uh, you know, hopefully they are seeing their eye doctor <laughs> yes. uh, regularly. <laughs> yes. um, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to become blind. We, we've talked with uh, with doctors on here before, right. and there's great right. advances mm -hmm. that are out there mm -hmm. in correcting vision, glaucoma, mm -hmm. things like that, mm -hmm. uh, cataracts and all. Absolutely, yeah. You know, as I said, there's only, you know, 10% of people who have mm -hmm. total vision loss, but a lot of people really become anxious about that, even if they have low vision. It's a good discussion to have with their doctor to, to determine what the outcome may be because um, they become very anxious that they may lose all of their vision over time. And that, in turn, can create people who really isolate themselves socially. Um, you know, it's, it's difficult for them. They have to, to rely on other people to take them places sometimes if they don't know their resources. And so um, they can isolate socially if they don't know what's available to them. And speaking of what's available, that's where the Braille Institute comes in, right? Absolutely. What are the, some of the services that Absolutely. you offer? So we have a whole variety of rehabilitation classes for vision. Uh, we offer them both on our campus in Anaheim and then also in several outreach locations. Mm -hmm. um, so we go to senior centers and community centers and libraries, um, assisted living facilities, and we mm -hmm. offer some short-term classes in, in uh, places around Orange County as well to, to learn about what we do. Um, our low vision specialists also can provide <coughs> some assistance in helping people to learn about magnification devices mm -hmm. and some um, lighting that may be of help in, in terms of doing daily tasks. And they do that both at our center in Anaheim and they come, they actually come down here to um, Laguna Woods uh, once a month and then over at the um, senior center once a month as well. Which is nice because in fact we're having the ladies on from the senior center in just a few minutes. Oh, good, good. Uh, the Braille Institute, it started in Orange County, didn't it? Or are you a chapter of a national organization, but uh, didn't it basically start here? We, um, uh, our corporate headquarters is in Los Angeles. That's okay. where it started, mm -hmm. and Orange County was the very first, uh, what we call, regional center. Yeah. Yeah, so. But it's national now? No, we are located in, in Central and Southern California. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. I, thought there I thought there was also a national organization that, so it's, it's a, a great benefit to have in this area. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, do you provide any services as far as bus transportation, or can you help that out if someone needs to get somewhere? We, we don't provide transportation, but we do um, help people to learn about the transportation options mm. that are available to them. There are a mm -hmm. number of public uh, transportation options that are available to people with vision loss, and our orientation mobility specialists can work one-on-one -on -one with our um, students to help them to learn how to do that to be comfortable taking those transportation methods. Okay, and also, uh, just right here, uh, we just talked about the Senior Center. Mm -hmm. People can always call uh, the Florence Sylvester Senior Center 
and they have a lot of different resources because obviously you folks sure. uh, work with them. Sure. Uh, I understand you're doing a, uh, a seminar, Understanding Vision Loss, and it's available for both families and caregivers, right? That's right. Um, we do an Understanding Vision Loss seminar um, three times a year mm -hmm. up at our Anaheim Center, and it's an evening seminar because we want families and friends of our students, sometimes professionals, come to learn about um, how to assist and interact with somebody who's visually impaired and do mm -hmm. it in a more respectful way that allows them to remain independent. So we give them um, some opportunity to experience what it's like to do some daily activities without yeah. vision loss. Um, and that's really impactful for people most times. So what we ask them to do is we ask them to um, eat a meal with a blindfold on mm -hmm. to see what that's like. And then we give them some tips about, you know, how is it, um, how to make it a little bit easier for somebody who has vision loss to have confidence when they're eating in home or, or at a restaurant. And then what we do is we um, teach them a technique called sighted guides. So this is to help people to learn to um, guide somebody who may need as, an assistance in mm -hmm. an unfamiliar location. Um, and what they do then is they put on a blindfold and they take turns being each other's guide, learning the techniques to do that correctly. Yeah. Um, and you know, including getting in and out of doorways, which can be a little bit challenging for people sometimes. So um, they're motivated to become a good guide for each other because you know then they have to reverse roles when they do that. Yeah. <laughs> so um, and then we um, we also give the uh, participants a chance to express you know what those experiences were like for them, and mm -hmm. then we talk about some of the emotional aspects that they may be addressing um, if they care about somebody who has vision loss because sometimes people forget about about that part of it. Yeah. Yeah. We actually yeah. had one student, she had came from a very large family and she lived in South County and she brought a huge group of her family members to one Understanding Vision Loss seminar. And then a couple months later, she was still so thrilled that they were practicing what they'd learned, mm -hmm. <laughs> that they hadn't forgotten that they were still doing that. And then the next time we offered the seminar, she brought another big group of family members to, to learn the same thing. So she was, she was very pleased with what they learned. It tends to be very impactful for the people who participate. Yeah, it sounds like it, it yeah. would be. Uh, a lot of uh, organizations such as yours, you often seek out uh, volunteers. Are you, do you mm -hmm. uh, use volunteers? Do you, do you need them? We use volunteers quite a bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. we actually have a, a 13 volunteers to everyone staff per person ratio wow. at Braille Institute. So volunteers teach classes for us. They help us in the library. Um, they do receptionist kinds of duties for us in our student services building. They go out and do public speaking for us. Um, we have a lot of volunteers who are um, support group facilitators for mm -hmm. us as well because they have a very unique perspective as to you know what it's like to address the challenges of vision loss. Very good. So if people want to help out, uh, the numbers on the screen seven one four eight two one five thousand. And whether or not uh, maybe you're someone who needs the services of the Braille Institute or you would like to uh, volunteer. Uh, it's a great organization. It's, it's mm -hmm. a wonderful resource to have, homegrown resource, Absolutely. really. It's great. Yeah. Uh, Marcy, I want to thank you for coming on. I really thank appreciate you. it. Say hi to Gloria for us. I will. And I uh, will. we'll see uh, you or her uh, next time. Okay. And uh, you guys do great work. You great. really do. It's thank important. you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Right. We'll be right back. At the Brown Institute, uh, there's a, a spirit of helpfulness from the time I arrive to the time I leave. And it, it's just uh, uplifting for me to come here. At Braille Institute, we help people with age-related vision loss get back to living the lives they want to live. And all of our services are completely free. It's just a big family here. You just feel like you're at home. Don't wait. Call Braille Institute today at 714-821-5000.